Hello, welcome. This is Jenna from McGuire. So glad you're here. A few weeks ago, I did a video on how to keep the joy in crafting. I will link to it at the end of this video if you want to check it out. One of the tips that I shared was to come up with five ideas when you get a new product to make sure that you are inspired to use it as soon as you receive it. Well, I got a lot of questions about that one, so I thought I would address it more specifically and share with you what I do to make sure I use my new products and a little trick that really has been helpful to me. I will start out by giving more information about this tip. Then we will make a bunch of cards using the ideas I came up with. Okay, so the tip that I really recommend when you find a new product that you're going to purchase is to have a post-it note and a pencil. On this post-it note, you're going to write the ideas that you come up with for that product. Now, the best way to do this is say you're online and you find a Hero Arts uh, Morning Glories message stamp set, which I'll use later, and you're gonna purchase that stamp set. You decided it was worth it to you. Write the product name at the top of your post-it note and then put five ideas underneath it that you think of at the time of purchase for that particular product. I feel like the best way to demonstrate this process is to do an example. So here we have a new kit from Hero Arts. This is the February 2023 My Monthly Hero Kit. This is the classic kit, which they've had these kind of kits for many years. You can buy the kit or subscribe and save even more. I've used their kits many times in videos because the value is amazing. Usually the value is like twice the cost and it has often is made up of tools you can use over and over again. So for example, in this one, look at that. It's an ink pad with stripes of different colors. There's a stamp set. There is a large die, four layering stencils, and then some fun papers. Now this is their classic kit that they've had for a long time, as I mentioned. Now this month, they have started to uh, have a premium kit, which includes everything in the classic kit, but then some additional things. So here's the premium kit. You can see everything from the classic kit is included, but then there's also these four large rub-on sheets, which I'll demonstrate later, a large die set and more. So you can subscribe for this or the other, or you can buy the kits individually, but do know they sell out pretty quickly and the products are not available separately. By the way, if you are already a subscriber of Hero Arts kits, this month of February, you get the premium kit for the cost of the classic. They're just bumping it up for you, no extra charge, just this month only. I wanted to explain the differences in these kits because I'm already getting questions about it, but now let's get back to the idea of creating those five ideas for a new product. I am choosing two products to do that example for today. One of them is the layering stencils and die found in the kits I just showed you. And the other is a die set. I'll show you more about that later in this video. So when I first saw the images of these products on my computer, I immediately got my post-it notepad and pencil, and I made two post-it notes with five ideas for each. Now, I usually would write the product name on the top, but I didn't know the product name at the time, so that part is missing. But that way, when my products came in the mail, I was able to put them into my little storage sleeves and put these post-it notes on it right away. Then when I have time to craft, all of my ideas are there and I'm ready to get started. Now you'll notice um, for the die pocket on the right, I just folded the post-it note back so that it fit into the pocket. You could also stick the post-it note on the outside, which is what I used to do, but I like tucking it in the back better. You could also just use scraps of cardstock for this if you prefer. I choose to use post-its because I can stick it somewhere until the product arrives. And while I'm creating, I can stick it onto my desk and refer back to it for what ideas I want to use. All right, let's get started with the first example. So this is four layering stencils and the coordinating die. They can be used together or separately. Again, this is part of the kits I showed you earlier. Now, when I saw this, I came up with several ideas for the stencils themselves and for the dies themselves, but of course I could use them together. 
Let's look at the ideas I came up with for the die. Because it's a large kind of frame look, I knew anything with a window would be great. The first idea is to do a pop-up window card, which I'll demonstrate first. Then a tri-fold window card, which I'll also demonstrate. A third, an obvious one for a frame or window would be a shaker card. Now, the fourth one is to use with a cloud die. This is something that I think is really important to share on this little post-it note, is you uh, put down ideas of other products you already have that you can use with it. I knew I had this Hero Arts cloud frame die, and I thought it would be neat to layer up with this butterfly. So by making one of or two of your ideas uh, to combine it with something you already have, you're going to get more use out of your own stash too. And then the fifth idea is to cut the little butterflies out of the frame so you had ind individual butterflies to use on a card. Now let's look at our ideas for using the stencils. I have that on the post-it note too because I have these stored together. Now, the first idea is to cover the entire background with butterflies. I figured that I could kind of move the stencil around, maybe do a little corner of butterflies here, then move my stencil and do a little corner there, and just keep moving the stencils around until my background is covered in butterflies, changing the look of it. Now, the second idea is this sketch. Uh, this is another thing you can put on your post-it notes is sketches of cards you might like. I thought it'd be neat to do the top of the frame at the bottom of the card and the bottom of the frame at the top of the card, creating a fun opening in the center where you could stamp a greeting. And that's all the ideas I had at the moment for this because I knew I was going to use the stencils along with the dies for some of those ideas. So now I know when I get this product, I can just get creating right away thanks to these ideas I've written down. Now let's look at the other products. These are the Looking Glass Butterfly Dies. I'll use them at the end of this video. I came up with five ideas for this and I have it on the post-it note included. The first one is to do an inlay with the scraps. So you could make a card using the dies, keep those little scraps and do a fun inlay, which I'll demonstrate. You could also use these dies to create die cut stencils, which I'll demonstrate. Then window on a trifold card. Uh, Hero Arts has a bunch of these looking glass type of dies. I will link to uh, the collection below. I did do a video with this type of die to create a trifold card. I will link to it up here on the top right and in my description below and at the end of this video. Now the fourth idea I have here is to use these dies along with this Hero Arts Butterfly Confetti die that I've had for some time. I will demonstrate that later. And my fifth idea is to create individual butterflies that you can scatter on a card. And then I also have a sketch there, which is the card I'll make later on. So you really could include a lot of different things on here. Sketches, ideas, and other products you can use with it are really top of uh, my list of what I like to put on there. But there is another idea I wanted to share. I don't do this one, but I think it would work really well. One of the best ways to find ideas for using a product is to watch videos like this one or to look at blogs or the company's product page. Now, if you're gonna do that, I recommend bookmarking things you see when you purchase the product. So if you've never created a bookmark in your internet browser, I have linked below to a video I found on YouTube that gives some more information. But creating bookmarks is easy to do. You can also create a folder for your bookmarks so that you can find all those ideas later. So if you bookmark a idea, I recommend changing the bookmark name to be the product name so you can go back and find it later very easily. And I recommend putting a note on your post-it note that you bookmarked an idea so you know to go refer to that. I think this would be a great way to kind of keep track of ideas you find. You could also keep track in a spreadsheet, but there's something about just having a piece of paper and a pencil so that you can stick those ideas right onto the products as soon as you get them. All right, let's start putting some of those ideas to use. We're gonna start with the pop-up window card, which was my first idea for this butterfly window die. Again, this comes in the Hero Arts kits I showed you earlier. I will also be using the stencils along with it. By the way, if you want more ideas for this type of card, I'll link to a video up here on the top right in my description below. 
All right, for this, you need two pieces of cardstock, one for the front and one for the back. And these are both five and a half inches tall and six and a quarter inches wide. The white will be the front and the blue will be the back for me. Now I'm scoring both of these pieces at a half inch and one inch from each end. Now this is a technique you can do with really any cardstock you have, but I do recommend a heavyweight cardstock if you have it. If you do not have a heavyweight cardstock, I will show you a way to create some supports to make it stronger at the end of this example. But heavyweight is definitely best. I'm using Hero Arts cardstock. Hero Arts has incredible heavyweight, beautiful cardstocks. Excellent for this. After I've done the scoring on the ends of both of the pieces, we're going to fold inside and then outside. So you have this little zigzag fold or accordion fold on the side of each of these pieces. Now these little zigzags actually form springs that make this pop up when you take it out of an envelope, but it flattens nicely to fit in the envelope. So there we have the back of our card, and I'll do the same thing with the white piece, which will be the front of our card. After we decorate these two pieces, we'll be able to tape these together by those flaps on the side, which creates the pop-up card. Since the white piece is the front of our card, that's where we'll cut the window using this large butterfly frame. I'll tape it between the two inside score lines, run that through our die cut machine to create the window. Now let's add some color to it. I'm using the layering stencils, which makes it very fast to add a quick color, but you could use markers, watercolor, whatever you want. I'm temporarily taping this flat onto a piece of scrap cardstock, and I'm lining up the first layering stencil. And I'll use uh, little pieces of tape that I can reuse over and over again to hold this in place. Now these stencils are really cool because they have four holes in the corners that you can color in with your pencil onto your scrap cardstock. Then every time you come in with another layering stencil, you line up those marks and they're easy to line up. So you don't have to look at the image, you just look at the marks. I'll show you in a moment. All right, now over this, I am applying different colors of Hero Arts inks, and I'm using a blending brush. You could use whatever inks you want to here, whatever inking tools you want to. I decided to do kind of a rainbow going around the frame. So to do this, I take colors and make sure I overlap them. Notice that the teal is overlapping the blue, the blue will overlap the purple, and by overlapping, you'll have an easy blend between the colors. I really like these Hero Arts Core Inks because there's a lot of colors included that are unique, but also great staples or classic colors. I will link here to a video with more information on those inks if you wanna check it out. All right, now we have the first layer of the butterflies done. I'm gonna wait on the second layer. I like to let my ink kind of dry into the paper before I bring the second layer. So let's skip to the third stencil, which does these little flowers around the butterflies. Now these flowers, you could do one color over the whole thing, but I decided to do the leaves and stems with green and then the flowers themselves with yellow. You could use pieces of tape to kind of mask off the different areas, but I oftentimes will just grab a scrap that I have on my desk and hold them in place to kind of do the masking quickly. I also like to use a smaller blending tool when I'm doing something like this, uh, but really you could use one size brush for everything. You'll just need to make your mask a little bit bigger. All right, so now I'll wipe the excess ink off and we can come in with a yellow to apply over the flower parts. This time I'm using a very small blending brush so I don't need to bother masking. I'm able to stay in the areas I want. Now it's time for a third stencil and notice each time I just line up the holes on the stencil with the dots on my scrap paper and it makes it effortless. I actually like the results after this. I like the soft look of this, but I am going to use that fourth stencil which adds details to the butterflies. Now I could do a white pigment ink over this. That would be a great way to give a softer look, but I did decide to use darker inks over it. So I'm using the same colors as I um, for, did over the first butterfly stencil, but just a darker uh, version of that color. So we'll have these tone on tone rainbow butterflies going around the frame and the yellow uh, flowers in between. 
Now I off screen created another frame. You can see it there. I inked it up in the same way, but I, this time I'm cutting out some of those butterflies so that I can use it as accents on my card. So this was actually my fifth idea on my post-it note was to cut out the butterflies and use them individually. And I'm just combining it onto this card. These will be floating at the center of the window. Now to stamp a sentiment on the inside of our card, this will show through the window. So I'm flattening the back of the card and the front of the card together in the corner of my stamping tool. And then I will place a sentiment right at the center and I'll stamp it with black ink. I'm using a sentiment from the Hero Arts Morning Glory Messages stamp set. If you wanted this sentiment to look like it was floating, you could always heat emboss it on acetate and glue it to the back of the window. And that way it would kind of float when the card is popped up but I decided just to keep it simple and stamp it right there at the inside of the card. All right, next I wanted to make those little butterflies float at the center of the window. To do so, you need just strips of scrap acetate. That's kind of hard to say. Any kind of thick acetate that you get from packaging is great, or you can purchase packs of acetate. I cut them into long, thin strips, and I'm putting double-sided tape on one end and adding the butterfly to it. So now we have a butterfly that's sticking at the end of a clear piece. I'll take the acetate piece and slide it between the back and the front of our cards. And then I will position that butterfly where I want it to be in the window. And I'll hold it right there with my finger. And then we'll remove the front of the card so that I can put a piece of tape at the other end of the acetate all the way on that left hand flap. So I'll just place it right there and that will hold it in place. So now that's kind of floating there in the middle. And I'll do the same thing with the other butterflies. I have a little acetate piece here with the butterfly stuck at the end. I'll slide it between the two layers, hold it there where I want it to be, lift off the front of the card and put a piece of tape over there all the way on that right hand flap. You just wanna make sure your tape is only on those left and right flaps. And then I'll do the same thing for a butterfly floating up here at the top. There are a few other ways that you could do this. You could just put an acetate window behind the frame itself and glue the butterflies on it. But by adding them on these little acetate strips like I'm doing here, they will actually move inside of the card. All right, now it's time to glue the two pieces together. I'm putting strong double-sided tape along those two outside flaps. So you can see the acetate is sandwiched between that tape and the cardstock itself. Now I can remove the adhesive from one side and at, line it up with the flap from the front of our card. So I'll just place this right on top, press it down, and then do the same thing on the other side. So you can see how this is a fun pop-up card. You're gonna press those flaps inward and it'll flatten to fit into an envelope, but when you take it out of the envelope, those little zigzag fold lines on the side force it to pop up. And look at that fun movement. It stands nicely on display also. I also created a mini note card for the back. This is three and three quarter inches by five inches. At first I glued it upside down on the back of my card, so I had to remove it and reposition it. But this will be a nice place to write my uh, personal message on the inside, or you could just write it on the flat back of the card itself. You may notice that the back of my card is nice and strong, but look at how the front kind of warps a little bit because I cut out so much of the center area. If you find this happens to you or you're using a lighter weight cardstock, you can add supports to it. This is a thin strip of acetate. I put double-sided tape on it and I'm just putting it in the inside front, uh, top and bottom, just to make it a bit stronger in those areas. You could totally skip this if you wanted to, but I like to make sure that my card arrives nicely and will stand up nicely on display, so I think it's worth it. I chose to put mine in a slightly larger A6 envelope, but you could use a regular envelope if you want. You push the sides in to flatten it to put it in the envelope, and as soon as you take it out, you see it pops up to give you dimension. And look at how those butterflies move and float in there. For a bit of sparkle, I added some small flat iridescent sequins around the frame and on the inside of the card itself. So this is a fun pop-up window card that works great with any window that you have. So this window die is perfect. If any frame die would work. You could even use basic oval or circle dies. Here is the card on the back. I did add a little extra butterfly up at the top. 
And if you want to see more ideas for this technique, I will again link to that video up here in the top right and at the end of this video. All right, now let's move on to another idea I had for that frame butterfly die. This time I'm skipping the stencils and doing a pretty quick card design. I will be using the dies and rub-ons that come in the premium kit that I showed you earlier. You can see those on the left in middle of the screen. Now the cool thing about the rub-ons, which I'll demonstrate, is that the outline dies of the butterflies over on the left actually cut out the rub-ons. They're the right size for it. So you can use the dies alone, the rub-ons alone, or use them together. I'll use them together today and then separately also. Now there is a stamp set available also that coordinates with the dies in the kit, or you can buy the outline dies separately if you're not getting the kit and you just like the stamp set. I always appreciate when companies give you the options. I will not be using the stamp set today, but you definitely could use it for the card design I'm sharing. Let's start by using the rub-ons. Now, I love rub-ons. I used to use them in scrapbooking. I'm glad they're making a comeback. What I do is I take the rub-on sheet and keep the backer with it, that's the white sheet, and I cut out the image that I want. I then take the backer sheet off of that image and lay the rub-on onto my cardstock, press it there in place, and then you can either use the tool that comes with the rub-ons or a bone folder to rub generously over the image. Once you've done that, you can carefully peel off the backing and look at that amazing image. This is an excellent way to get a really crisp looking image without the effort of coloring or, or watercolor or anything else. Now I wanted a bunch of these butterflies to create a bunch of cards. So I decided to do the whole entire sheet. Now I wouldn't recommend this because you see those flowers and the little, um, moon and stars, I don't have dies for those. So those are gonna go to waste unless I cut them out. So if you just want the butterflies themselves, I recommend doing them individually. So I just pressed over the entire sheet. If you notice that peeling off is a little difficult, just stop and rub it a little bit more and then you will end up with great results. Okay, so now I have all of these beautiful butterflies. I could leave it as a background and use this on a card but I'm using those coordinating dies that come in the kit and I will cut out each of these and I'll quickly have these beautiful butterflies I can add anywhere I want on my card. And by the way, another reason I really like rub-ons is you can use them on other surfaces. Like you can use them on acetate, you can use them on fabric, across two pieces of cardstock and more. But today I just decided to die cut them out to add to our card. All right, let's go ahead and create that window in the front of our card. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch side folding white note card. I'll open that up and then add the frame, butterfly frame die right to the front center and then run that through our die cut machine. This will be a trifold card, so I need another card to go on the inside. I cut this one to be a little bit smaller. It is four by five and a quarter inches. And we're actually going to stamp on this upside down. So we're gonna make put the card into our stamping tool upside down. So you'll see the score line will be on the right. I'm adding it onto a sticky mat to hold it in place as I do some stamping. Over this, I'm stamping one of the images from the Hero Arts Background Texture Strips die, uh, stamp set. This is an amazing stamp set because it has four different images that you could repeatedly stamp to cover a background. And it's a great way to have four different background options, but all in one stamp set. So I am stamping the text image repeatedly across the background with a soft blue ink so that this just adds a little bit of interest to the inside of this simple card. Because these images are clear, I can easily move and line them up to cover that entire background. This card will get glued inside of our other card. Now remember it's upside down. We have the score line on the right this time. I'm putting an adhesive on the back of it and we'll glue it right there uh, centered up on the inside of our white card. That way the white card opens to the left, the blue card opens to the right, and you can have your personal message on the inside. I will stamp a thank you message from this stamp set that's included in the kit that I showed you earlier. And I'll stamp that with black ink right onto that blue part, making sure that it shows through the window. So I just put my entire card into my stamping tool to make sure I got the position I like. 
I have picked three butterflies to add to the front. I did die cut two additional white die cuts and glued it behind our rub on butterfly just for a bit of dimension, but you could skip that if you want. And I'm gluing these so that they float around our frame, making sure that it keeps that sentiment showing through the opening. I also created identical butterflies that I'll glue to the blue card itself, lining it up with the butterflies on the front. So I put glue on the back of this butterfly. I'll line it up with the butterfly on the front. The adhesive is facing towards the camera. Then I'll close the card onto it. And now I know that butterfly is positioned right behind the one on the front. So you only see those butterflies on the inside when the card is opened. Thankfully, there's more than one sheet of these rub-ons in the kit. So I was able to create multiples of the same image. So there we have the second idea that I had on my post-it note for this frame die, and that was to create a window trifold card. This one actually came together very quickly because I used those rub-ons for the main images. Huge time saver. By the way, another thing I like about rub-ons is they have kind of a matte finish to them so they don't look shiny like a sticker. So I shared two of the ideas from the post-it note and I have those other ideas on my post-it note that I can try later. Now I do have the other products, the butterfly dies and post-it note that we'll look at later in this video. But first I wanted to do one bonus card using some of the other products in the kit that I showed you. These butterfly dies are from the premium kit and we're gonna create a see-through card front. I created a bunch of butterflies in three different blue card stocks. Using these dies from the premium kit, I have the outline die and the detail die together, but you could use them separately if you wanted to. Now that middle shade of blue cardstock, by the way, is Hero Arts Lapis Blue, which is one of my favorite colors of all time. All right, next I have a clear sticky mat from Misty. This is the same one I used in my Misty stamping tool earlier. On the back side of that sticky mat, I have taped a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock to use as a guide. Now onto the sticky portion of this mat, I am arranging these butterfly die cuts. I'm making sure that they overlap nicely so that I can glue them together. And I'm making sure I cover all of that white cardstock that's showing through. Now I'm doing this pretty quickly, but I do have a very complete video on this technique that I'll link up here on the top right and at the end of this video if you want to see more. Now I'm going in with some liquid adhesive and anywhere the butterflies overlap, I'm putting some adhesive. Make sure this is a strong glue because you need them to stay connected. So you just kind of lift up the corner of a butterfly, put a little adhesive under it, then press it down and put something heavy on it while it dries. I'll do this uh, behind all of the areas where the butterflies are overlapping and then give it some time to dry. Once it's completely dry, I will flip over my sticky mat and carefully peel off all of those butterflies that are connected. So now it's one big piece with those little see-through openings, which really makes it fun. We need to trim this down to be the size of the note card. So I'm starting at the top and then just keep rotating and I'll end up cutting this to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. At this point, I sometimes add small die cuts to the edges to make sure the edges are strong enough that this will stand up on display. And you can just glue those right into any of those weaker areas, let them dry and then trim off the excess. I also have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card, and I'm cutting off the front of the card, leaving about a half inch flap up there at the top. Now on the back top of our uh, butterfly card front, I will put strong adhesive. I recommend a strong liquid adhesive. This one is from Gina K. It's the Gina K Connect. And then I will press this onto the flap that will form this into a card. So the front of our card will be the see-through butterflies, the back of the card will be the white. This technique is fun to do with different dies. I think it'd be fun to die cut a bunch of those rub-on butterflies and have the entire card front, those colorful butterflies. I'll have to do that later on. Now for the inside of the card, I created a mini note card that is three and three quarter inches by five inches. And I'm gluing that in there so that you can put a personal message inside of that and it won't show through the openings on the front of the card. 
For sentiment, I'm using the Hero Arts Grateful Words die set. This has thankful, gather, gratitude, blessed, and grateful, and the shadow dies for each. This is a great set. For a little sentiment strip, I'm using the Hero Arts Signpost Stamp and Cut XL Stamp and Die Set. This is a bundle that comes together. I've used this one before in videos. I just chose the Sending Hug sentiment that I'll use on this card and again later in this video. So I cut the Blessed from Silver cardstock and the Shadow from White. I die cut a few extra layers and glued those all together. And now I'll glue that on the top center on the front of our card. And then I have our stamp sentiment that I stamped with cornflower blue ink so it would match all of our butterflies. And I'll glue that below the blessed. Now for the inside of the card, I wanted it to have a little interest to it. That's something I'm gonna try to do from now on. So I'm gluing one butterfly there in the top center, making sure it's hidden behind the butterflies on the front of our card so it's not seen when the card is closed. Now into some of these openings and on some of the butterflies, I'm adding some silver gemstones. The ones that are on the white area will show whether the card is opened or closed. So here's a closer look at that completed bonus card. I love that see-through card front. It's something fun and unexpected and a great way to use dies like this one. And you have the mini note card on the inside so your personal message is hidden. This will stand nicely on display because I used heavyweight cardstock for those die cuts and I made sure they overlapped and connected well. If you do not use heavyweight cardstock, I do recommend doubling up the die cuts so that the front of the card is strong so it will stand up nicely. Okay, now let's move on to the other product that I had the post-it note ideas for. This is the Looking Glass Butterfly die set. I'm gonna actually use several of the ideas from my post-it sheet on two cards. So these dies are three dies that you can cut and layer together for a really cool look. I'm gonna start with my sketch and to use the idea of combining this with an older product, the Butterfly Confetti die. And I will do the idea of doing an inlay with the scraps on the inside of the card. To get started with the front of the card, I need to cut squares that are about the same size as this die. Instead of measuring it, I'm holding it up against the edge of my blade and making a pencil mark on my trimmer. I can always erase that pencil mark later. I'm just gonna use that to quickly cut a bunch of squares this size. I will cut these uh, squares from three shades of blue cardstock again from Hero Arts. Remember that middle color is that lapis blue that is beautiful. Now that these are all cut to be the same size of that die, I can line up the dies with each of the pieces, just lining up the edge of the die with the edge of the cardstock. I will tape these together and run it through my die cut machine. I'm using white and three shades of blue cardstock. All right, now I have my three die cut pieces and I'm just gonna simply glue them together and look how easy these line up to give a beautiful layered result. Again, there are many looking glass dies like this in their collection and I'll link to those below. Remember how I noted on my post-it note that I wanted to use this die set with the older Hero Arts Butterfly Confetti die. That's what I'm doing here. I'm putting glue on the back of one of these white die cuts and adding it to the front of a white note card. It's just tone on tone, but it adds a lot of interest to this simple card. And all of those little butterflies that I die cut out with that background die, I can save as accents for future cards. I have glued my layered piece to the top center of my card. And now I'm placing foam tape around the four sides of the layered piece. I have die cut a white square frame that I'll place on top of this foam tape just to create a nice frame for our layered piece. Now that square frame I cut using the Hero Arts Looking Glass Circle and Square Frames. And I'm putting liquid adhesive on top of that foam tape so that I can place my frame on top of it and wiggle it until it's centered and straight and then let it dry. By the way, if you don't have that square die, you could always create your own frame using two different size square dies. All right, now for the inside of the card, I thought I would use the idea of doing an inlay with this die set using the scraps. 
So I have cut from the middle layer on this blue piece of cardstock, and now I'll cut that same piece with the first layer. And this gives me these little butterfly wings. So I can die cut the body and glue that into the top center of our inside of our card, glue the wings next to it, and then all of those little die cut pieces I have laying there on my desk that are left over from all of these projects, I can glue into the openings. So this is die cut inlay. It takes a little bit of time to do, but really there's not many pieces here to inlay. You just pop them in place like a puzzle piece and it's definitely worth it. And the advantage of doing this for the inside is it's nice and smooth, so it doesn't add too much bulk. Now doing die cut inlay was another idea I had for this die set on my post-it note sheet. So I've actually combined a few different ideas from that post-it note onto this one card. Here is a look at the completed card. I did white heat emboss the sending hug sentiment onto a navy cardstock strip, and that is from the signpost stamp and die set I showed you earlier. So I was able to use two ideas from my post-it note on this one card, and that is to combine that older Hero Arts uh, butterfly confetti background die onto this card and the die cut inlay that's on the inside. And I really like the results of this, so I plan to use a bunch of colored cardstock scraps to do more layered butterfly pieces like that. All right, now let's use that same die set, but use one of the other ideas from my post-it note, and that is to use the die set as a stencil set. So we're gonna create our own layering stencils. So I have some scrap cardstock here cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I have the backmost die that I'm cutting from this. And I'm cutting it right from the top center. Now I am taping that temporarily onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Over those little openings, I will apply a generous amount of dark ink. I'm doing a layering stencil here, but I'm actually starting with the most detail layer first in working my way out. It just seemed like the best way to go about doing the stenciling, but you could do whatever order you want. Now I can come in with the second layering stencil that I created with the other die, and I will line it up with the inking we've already done and tape it in place. I will first use two, those two pieces of scraps to mask off everything but the body so that I can apply a charcoal ink to the body alone. I will then use pieces of tape that I've reused many times to tape off those little dots. I don't wanna ink those, I'll ink them up later. And then I am applying a slightly lighter ink color over the other opening. So I'm using a lighter blue and a lighter pink than I did the first time. Now I'm going to remove the uh, stencil and we'll go on to our last stencil. This one has the most openings. You could just do light blue and light pink over this whole thing, but I thought I would have a little more fun with it. I masked off the parts of the leaves and stems that are on the bottom of this opening with some tape. And over the rest of it, I'm applying a light blue and light pink. Then I can remove the tape and move it to mask off the parts we've already inked. And over these openings, I'll apply a green ink, and this will give us those stems and leaves at the bottom. Again, you could keep this simple by just doing the same color over everything, or even using markers to trace in the openings. I kept this as a super simple card and just stamped a sentiment underneath our inking. I could do some inking on the inside. I'm not sure yet. I think I'm gonna write a longer personal message in here, so I'm leaving it blank. This is a great way to take a layering die set and make a one layer card. Now I did add some yellow pearls to the center of my flowers, but you could skip that if you want to keep it true one layer. So for this card, I used the idea for my post-it note to use those layering dies to create layering stencils. And I still have other ideas on my post-it note that I can refer to later. All right, so there you have a longer video for you, but I really wanted to share this idea of having a post-it note with ideas for your products and also share a bunch of cards. So I hope it was worth your time watching. If you are interested in the supplies I use, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. And at the end here, I'll link to a couple other videos I mentioned during this one. Thanks for spending this time with me. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again soon for another video.